that out the way. All right, all right, all right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday night live diamond class. This is Brandon Ivy from Los Angeles, California, CEO and founder of Ivy League Crypto Academy. Go ahead and type your name in the chat box where you're listening in from as a disclaimer. I am not a licensed financial advisor to be giving financial advice. I read the news, give my opinion, share a suggestion, and it is up to you to make your own informed, intelligent decision on which direction you want to move into. Oh, where's my cup? All right. I got to get, let me get my juice real quick. So um, while you guys type your name in the chat box, I'll be right back. All right, all right, we're back. Let's see who we have. Adolph Hayes, Dagmar, Faye, Jacqueline, Joyce Easily. See, Kenny Taylor, Kevin Strauser, Leonard, Lizzie Wright, Martha, Gina Muhammad, Mike Nowowski, Nathan Hansberger, Patty Geis, Roger Banks, Sherry Sullivan, Steve Randall, Van Hairston, Walter. And my man, Willie Davis. Welcome, 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 everybody. So tonight is our DeFi night, decentralized finance. So the lesson that we are doing tonight is going to be yield farming. How many of you have ever done any yield farming? You heard that term before, but you didn't really understand, you know, what is it? <laughs> what is yield farming? See, so yield farming in the early days of DeFi is what made a lot of people rich very, very rich when it came to DeFi. They were the first ones on, they were early on, especially if you had a lot of money to get started with. Uh, so they were using Uniswap, PancakeSwap, and it's almost like a form of staking where they were providing you uh, liquidity for these, these mean tokens and getting a percentage of every transaction going through. So it's a form of staking and they were making a killing off of this. So we're going to talk about tonight yield farming. So let me get this set up. Oh, yeah, I haven't used. Oh, OK. Uh, I haven't used P the, the slides on this laptop before, so it's like I'm brand new. So let's share screen. A slideshow from the beginning. All right. So everybody can see my screen. So yield farming. One of DeFi's hottest trends, yield farming can bring riches, but it's not for crypto beginners or those who cannot afford to lose. That's why I said this is those who have money really can play this game well, but this is not for beginners. If you've never done a swap before <laughs> on Uniswap or PancakeSwap, don't even think about you know, getting into all, to the whole yield farming stuff. Yield farming offers investors rewards for locking up their crypto holdings in a DeFi market, decentralized financial market. Your bank pays you a quarter percent, but some cryptos will pay you 6% or even way more for locking in funds for the true believers in any decentralized finance protocol. 
If you're not afraid of watching your token's value fall 20% or more, then DeFi yield is your next crypto investment because that can also happen. As fast as it can go up, it can also drop on you. At its core, yield farming is a process that allows cryptocurrency holders to earn rewards on their holdings. With yield farming, an investor deposits units of a cryptocurrency into a lending protocol to earn interest from trading fees. Some users are also rewarded with additional yields from the protocol's governance token. Yield farming works in a similar way to bank loans. When the bank loans you money, you pay back the loan with interest. Yield farming does the same, but this time the banks are crypto holders like yourself. So in other words, you are the bank providing loans to others. Yield farming does the same thing. Uh, yield farming uses idle cryptos that would have otherwise been wasting away in an exchange or a hot wallet to provide liquidity in DeFi protocols like Uniswap in exchange for return. So you might have heard Herschel Crow talk about, I don't have a cold storage wallet because my money's not working for me if it's, if it's there. It's just sitting in a wallet. So here, instead, if you're not going to spend the coins, the money, and you're just holding it, why not loan it out and earn the interest from it? That's the same type of process. When traditional loans are made through the banks, the amount lent out is paid back with interest, explains Daniel R. Hill, CFP, AIF, and president of Hill Wealth Strategies. With yield farming, the concept is the same. Cryptocurrency that would normally just be sitting in an account is instead lent out in order to generate returns. This is letting your money work for you. Since yield farming began in 2020, yield farmers have earned returns in the form of annual percentage yield. So every time you hear APY, that means annual percentage yields. People get that confused with API. Those are two terms in crypto you'll hear. API is when you are connecting a like a bot or a third party to your account. Uh, that's API, but APY, annual percentage yields, that can reach triple digits. But this potential return comes at high risk with the protocols and coins earned subject to extreme volatility and rug pools, wherein developers abandon a project and make off with investors' funds. So not all yield farming projects are good. You know, you, you got to pay attention to the tokens. So how does yield farming work? So also known as liquidity farming, yield farming works by first allowing an investor to stake their coins by depositing them into a lending protocol through a decentralized app or DAP. Other investors can then borrow the coins through the DAP to use for speculation where they try to profit off sharp swings. They anticipate in the coin's market price. Yield farming is simply a rewards program for early adopters. That's why I said those who did this early on made a killing. It says uh, uh, Avalanche public blockchain that works with several DeFi, okay, offers yield farming. Blockchain-based apps offer incentives for users to provide liquidity by locking up their coins in a process called staking. Staking occurs when centralized crypto platforms take customers' deposits and lend them out to those seeking credit. Creditors pay interest, depositors receive a certain proportion of that, and then the bank takes the rest. So you guys see how that works? This is a centralized, so you know the flow. So staking occurs when a centralized crypto platform takes customers' deposits, just like a bank does, and then lends them out. So when you work a nine-to-five job and you got your direct deposit into your bank account, the bank takes your money, and legally, they can take 90% of it, <laughs> right? They, they're only legally uh, told to hold at least 10% in, the, in cash. So they take 90% of it and they put it to work. 
They lend it out. I, I say this all the time. My first time learning this process was when I watched that Christmas movie, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. George Bailey Savings and Loans. That's where I first cut that concept. And I remember asking my grandpa if he could do the same thing, start, start a savings and loans company. And my grandpa just looked at me like, boy, shut up. He didn't, he didn't understand what I was talking about. But it made perfect sense to me. I'm like, that's like the ultimate hustle. You give me money. I lend it out to somebody else. Whoever I lend it to, they pay me the money back plus interest. So I can pay back the person who gave me the money and I keep the interest. So I'm making money off of other people's money. OPP, OPM. <laughs> What is that, Gina? Is that like what a, what I think the wallet is, nerd wallet? I know I saw a wallet that keeps saying get a loan. No, there's, there, it's not too big today because of, we're still in the crypto winter. But when, when the storm ceases and what happened before, it was very, very big. Like uh, I had, oh, I deleted those apps off mine. Nexo and others that I was doing this with. This lending is usually facilitated through smart contracts. So the way, instead of doing it through a bank, a centralized agency is done through a program, a smart contract. Yeah, Nexo. I, had, I was using Nexo too. Which are essentially just a piece of code running on a blockchain, functioning as a liquid pool. Yeah, Kevin's right. A legal loan shark. It's a legalized loan shark. Users who are yield farming, also known as liquidity providers, lend their funds by adding them to a smart contract. I will be looking into this again. Like it, 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 when the new gen stuff comes through, I'm going to have a lot of play money. So I'm going to have a certain percentage set aside that I'm going to be just you know letting work for me, not spending it. Uh, but I'm going to look into some new yield farming protocols. This kind of took in a back seat for the last eight months or so. Nobody's really been talking about it or doing it. And the guy that I know that made millions off of this is not even touching yield farming right now. Not until the, the turnaround. His name is Brandon Brown. So users who are yield farming, also known as liquidity providers, lend their funds by adding them to a smart contract. Investors who lock up their coins on the yield farming protocol can earn interest and often more cryptocurrency coins, the real boon to the deal. So if you've got money in a bank and you earn interest, you get fiat money. But what if you get your interest back in the same crypto coin that you're, that like you're staking? And then that value of that goes up. So it's like you're getting paid double, triple, quadruple. You're getting your money back. You're getting interest plus the value of the token rising on you. But it can also fall on you too. If the price of those additional coins appreciates, the investor's returns rise as well. This process provides the liquidity newly launched blockchain apps need to sustain long-term growth. So let's say you are creating a new app. You've got a new project and you want to get it off the ground. The first question most big time uh, uh, investors ask is, what is your liquidity? But what if you don't have a lot of money to lock up on your own project and you go to the loan shark? Well, you go to these protocols that say, we will provide you with the liquidity on your project if we get a percentage of everything that's coming through. So you say, okay, that now I have the funds that I need. And it's a smart contract too, so you're not getting cheated out. The only thing that can happen is if the project was bogus from the start and they pull a rug pool and run off with all the crypto. That is possible. So you got to watch who you're lending your money to. And yet in the crypto space that we know of, you don't have Jimmy coming knocking on your door to break your legs. Actually, it's a little bit more dangerous in crypto. People end up disappearing in crypto. So this is how this works. 
So this provides the liquidity newly launched blockchain apps need to sustain long-term growth. These apps can increase community participation and secure this liquidity by rewarding users with incentives like their own governance tokens, app transaction fees, and other funds. You could compare yield farming to the early days of ride sharing. Uber, Lyft, and other ride sharing apps needed to bootstrap growth. So they provided in incentives for early users who referred other users onto the platform. You know what this is? Starvar is doing that. Starvar is saying, for the, you early adopters, we're going to give you incentives for helping to get this off the ground, for sharing this, to participating. You're going to get extra loot boxes. You're going to get extra VARA vouchers. You're going to get this. You're going to get that, that people that come after won't ever have access to. So early users. Another incentive for staking is to accumulate enough shares of the crypto to force a hard fork where a major infrastructural change is made to the design of the crypto. Hard forks enable the holders of crypto to force changes that would, at least in the opinion of the majority of the holders, improve the cryptocurrency going forward. In a way, hard forking gives crypto investors a power like what share voting does for stockholders. In other words, it's like a DAO, except they're for since it's not a DAO, they're forcing it. The same way shareholders can vote on key matters affecting the management or direction of the companies they invest in, cryptocurrency holders can use hard forks to push a cryptocurrency protocol in a certain direction. Staking coins to cause a hard fork allows crypto to take on this important characteristic of equity investments and moves crypto from a cash-like investment in a portfolio to a quasi-equity quasi investment. Yield farming works in a similar way to bank loans. So when the bank loans you money, you pay back the loan with interest. Yield farming does the same, but this time the banks are the crypto holders. Yield farming uses idle cryptos that would otherwise be wasting away in an exchange or a hot wallet to provide liquidity in DeFi protocols like Uniswap or PancakeSwap in exchange for returns. Now, is crypto yield farming profitable? Well, while yield farming is unquestionably risky, it can also be profitable. Otherwise, no one would bother attempting it. CoinMarketCap provides yield farming rankings with various liquidity pools, yearly and daily APY. It's easy to find pools running with double-digit yearly APY and some of those thousand percentage point APYs. But many of these also have a high risk of impermanent loss, which would make investors question if the potential reward is worth the risk. The profitability of yield farming, just like investment in crypto, more generally is still very uncertain and speculative. Smith believes that the potential return pales in comparison to the risk involved in locking up your coins while you're farming. What I found, because I was looking at this in the early days, some of the big guys, they were putting in $100,000, 200000 $300,000. And then you had the masses, people putting... 500, 1,000, 5,000, 2,000, you know, smaller amounts, much more of them. Only a handful of people actually won in the yield farming in the early days. And they won big time and everybody else lost. Uh, I, I, I haven't found this to be across the board win for most people because it, it, unless you're playing with a lot of money, it really, it really didn't make any sense. Uh, profit because it's not the program wasn't around long enough to really yield you a result. See, we say APY, annual percentage yield, annual, year to year. Yield farming just came about 2020. That's three years ago. And the entire industry is almost not dead, but it's dormant right now because we're in a crypto winter. So we're talking about a good year and a half run. 
So if you only had maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars, if the project succeeded, you know, you made what? Another thousand, another two thousand, maybe three thousand. But if you had a hundred thousand or more, now we're talking about these guys flipping that within a year to four hundred thousand, half a million, or a million in a short period of time, and then they get out. They're not staying in year after year after year because the project might not be here. So this is still pretty, pretty new. So let's uh, see. Is crypto yield farming profitable? Okay. Your overall profit will also depend on how much cryptocurrency you're able to stake. That's what I was saying. It's about how much can you stake. To be profitable, yield farming requires thousands of dollars of funds and extremely complex strategies. That's why this isn't for beginners. So the bottom line, yield farming involves staking or locking up your cryptocurrency in exchange for interest or more crypto. As crypto becomes more popular, yield farming will become more mainstream. It's a simple concept that has been around for as long as banks have existed and is just a digital version of lending with interest for profit to the investors. While it's possible to earn high returns with yield farming, it is also incredibly risky. A lot can happen while your cryptocurrency is locked up, as is evidenced by many rapid price swings known to occur in the crypto markets. As with anything in life, if something is too good to be true, it likely is. It's best to understand how yield farming works and all of the underlying risks and opportunities prior to participating in yield farms. As a disclaimer, this information is intended for educational and training purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. As with all financial decisions, you should contact your licensed financial advisor before investing in any financial instrument. Here's what I will say, because it's, it's, it's almost a dead industry right now. I'm going to get into this big time because as that last slide said, as long as there's going to be crypto, there's going to be loan sharks. <laughs> it always, as long as there's money, there's going to be banks that want to lend it out or go loans. You got to apply for it. So it's going to be big business, but it's also about timing. So the best timing that I'm going to look back into this is in 2024. Why? A year from now. The next Bitcoin halving is going to take place. The next crypto bull run will be going into full swing. And when the markets start moving up, people start flooding to the space. And also new projects start coming out. Now, this is where you got to be careful. So I said it's not for beginners. The people that made the most money on yield farming picked tokens like a Shiba Inu or a Dogecoin. They took advantage of this and all right, or a Hex. Uh, that you can only get on a Uniswap back in those days and said, all right, I'm going to provide liquidity for these tokens. And I'm going to hope that it goes up by 10,000%. And that's how they made a whole lot of money. The problem is only a small percentage of tokens do that compared to everything out there. So you've got to figure out which token am I going to put money on? So in, in to, for this to work, it, it can't do a little bit. We're talking $10,000 or more if you want to see a big hit, but can you afford to lose that if it doesn't work? So that's why it is not for beginners. It is very profitable if you want to take the risk and to learn about it, uh, but it's good to know what it is, which is why I included that lesson here. Now, remember what I said about DeFi. DeFi is a foreign language to me. I am not the technical type with all of that little stuff. Herschel Crow loves that type of stuff. So you might ask me questions I cannot answer, <laughs> all right? DeFi doesn't get me all excited jumping out of bed like Metaverse does. Like I can't wait till I do a Metaverse class, but we still need to know this to have it in our repertoire and to take advantage because I, I will take advantage of it later. I will say, all right, here's 25K I'll, I'll play with uh, in yield farming and see what I can flip that to. So you guys know what to do. 
Any questions, comments, go ahead and raise your hand and I'll call on you to get that answer for you. Any comments, questions, aha moments? Did you learn anything new? Did you always hear about your farming but didn't know what it was and now you know what it is? <laughs> all right. We're all good then. Oh, oh well, there we go. <laughs> Patty said no. Go ahead, Patty. Come on now. You didn't just meet me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't let you go. Hi, Brandon. Um, okay, so I just want to understand the difference between yield farming or liquidity pool mm -hmm. and staking. So it's held with the exchange versus a project for like IBAT. So like IBAT, I have my token staked. Yep, that's different. Okay. Through my wallet with that. But if I were to do IBAT on an exchange, it would be considered yield farming. No. No. Yield farming would be more like I'm going to go to Uni, uh, Uniswap or PancakeSwap. It's a decentralized exchange. And I'm going to provide uh, whatever token that's not even on any major exchange yet. And instead of the project holding the tokens, the exchange, the decentralized exchange does. And it's in and the and it's, it's it's a smart contract and it's program. Say I'm locking up on this exchange, and now people can come to the exchange and get that liquidity directly from the decentralized exchange. So it's a little different from um, Crypto.com, for example, staking or Binance staking or a specific token staking. This is on the decentralized side that's staking, smart contract. So there is no individual involved in this process. But similar type yield. Yes, but, but similar. Okay, that was it, thank you. No problem. Mr. Randall, go right ahead. Okay, uh, we mentioned uh, um, a few days ago about the, um, uh, the federal government I guess cracking down on on, on the staking process. Mm -hmm. uh, has there been anything mentioned about about yield farm, or do they consider they, that same? They don't have any jurisdiction on that because it's decentralized. So they can crack down on staking on centralized agencies like like Kraken or or um, uh, Gemini and the others because they, those are centralized in the United States. Decentralized. Who, who are you going to pull in a robot? You know they they don't have any jurisdiction on that, but they can, but but they can mess around with the off on off ramping of it, uh, especially if you're trying to move it from that into a U.S. type of bank. Uh, and if they find any individual that's saying I created this project and you've cre you've made money from it and now you're moving it into it, they can probably go after that type of person, uh, if, depending on how the regulation works. But right now, no, there's, there, it, this doesn't affect the yield farming side. Okay. That's all I got. No problem. Mr. Davis, go right ahead. Uh, am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Hey, how you doing, brother? Doing good. How about yourself? Oh, doing, doing well. Just a uh, little bit of input. Now, I'll, I'll run it through you first, but uh, I created a coin with my NFT um, site. Oh, so, nice. yeah, and it's, it's the same thing. You go out there and, and you stake it depending on which, which blockchain you're going to run with. Mm -hmm. And so, like you say, you go to like PancakeSwap or Uniswap and you put up an amount of other cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin, what I did, I staked mine to uh, Polygon to create the query pool with polygon and so it's like a 20 to 1 uh when you go out and you put so it's called the farm is creating a liquidity pool and then as people come in and do transactions so like right now it's it's not doing anything because i haven't opened it up to be able to be swapped but the okay. the pool has already been created and so there's a percentage that's charged each time they exchange. So if it's like 5% uh, 
uh, that is the charge for the exchange, then maybe 3% will go to the holder of the coin or whoever did the liquidity. And mm -hmm. so the other part goes to the exchange. So, but I'll, I'll run it past you and uh, before I introduce it to the whole group. And oh, so you can share it. Yeah, no problem. So, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's very well. It's like I, I, I staked it in uh, the liquidity I created. It's like 435 million. <laughs> 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 That more is going to be a very, very wealthy man. <laughs> yeah. It's very interesting. So like I say, I'll, I'll brainstorm it with you here upcoming shortly. And, uh, we'll, okay, we'll... good deal. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Mr. Davis. No problem. All right, anybody else? All right, well, next Tuesday's course, we're going to still be on yield farming. It's going to be the top 10 yield farming protocols, top 10 yield farming protocols. Then the one after that is DeFi versus cryptocurrencies. Uh, then we'll keep on going. So top 10 yield farming protocols. Tomorrow night, we go with the metaverse and we're going to be doing AI and the metaverse. And that one's going to be open. It'll still be here. Same Zoom link. So please do not give this Zoom link out to anybody. If you want to invite people to watch, Tell them that they got to watch it in the five-day challenge group, just like they're watching the five-day challenge uh, Facebook group. So you can just send them your link to register. So just go to ilcachallenge.com or you, whatever your link is if you're a promoter of ILCA. Let them register for free. I will also be uh, streaming it on my Facebook page. So you can also do that if they don't want to do that. Once I start streaming, go to my Facebook page and then share it on yours so that your, your community can see it. And I'll be promoting, I'll be letting them know, hey guys, you guys are getting a sneak peek at what our diamond class gets weekly with live training. It's one thing to go to YouTube and watch a video, but what if you've got questions? What if you, you know, it's just a video and you guys can attest, you have access to these videos, you pay for them, but you'd rather me do it live with you than you just sitting and watching the video of me just speaking. And so I'm gonna we're gonna show that off to everybody and that they can see why they want to be part of our community. Uh, any other news coming? This is Tuesday, that's Wednesday. We got crypto talk tomorrow morning. It's still gonna be 30 minutes late. I just picked up my wife from the airport today, but I'll still be taking my son to school in the morning. So 30 minutes late tomorrow for inner circle. Uh, yeah, that's at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. What is the metaverse talk topic? AI and the metaverse. Yeah, that's why we're doing That's why I'm doing it public because AI is the hot, hot thing going right now. Yes, Patty. Question. So on Crypto Talk, we haven't looked at your wallets in a long time. Can we maybe look to see how the markets are doing in your long-term and short-term wallets tomorrow? Well, the only wallets I always show was Crypto.com and um, what's the other Trust. one? Trust. Trust. So yes. Uh, ooh. Okay, we're going to do an experiment tomorrow because I have my phone connected to my laptop, the one that was acting up, not to this one. So I can share screen at the same time. So tomorrow I'm going to do a test. This has been running fine for me all day. No issue. So I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to do it tomorrow on my main laptop. And then I can show, show like, let me pull it up right now. I can see crypto.com. See these tokens. I've had these on the back burner and I haven't done anything to to, to move them. This used to be a $17,000 wallet and I haven't done anything different. It's just the market dropped on us. So that's our crypto.com wallet and then the trust wallet. And remember that one token? I, I could have sold that when it was at five. I made $5,000 off of it. It was the one I didn't trust. Uh, LS, not LSS. So that was the trust wallet. That used to be at about 1500 we had there, 898 now. Yeah, okay, we'll cover that tomorrow morning. So if, if I have a problem with my laptop, I'm going to swap it out and bring in back my this one. But we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. But I'm going to be revamping when we start doing this again uh, because I'm going to – I want to probably move these tokens to my, my permanent wallet and start a new – 
portfolio with metaverse and AI tokens and, and start growing that. All right, everybody, anything else? I think we're good to go. We've got, there was some Nugent news today. Nugent news was, let me see. FYI, Fazzle is making an announcement in a few days. Okay, since we're now going into March, tomorrow's March 1st. So we'll be keeping our eye out for that. Uh, any announcements of what's going on with Nugent. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your evening. I will see you all for Crypto Talk tomorrow morning. Uh, Patty, rem oh, I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap my computers, but Patty, just remind me that I'll, I'll pull up those, uh, those two wallets and we'll go from there. Maybe I even opened up L Bank as well. I haven't opened up L Bank in a while. And we'll take a look at what's L Bank going on. All right, everybody, take care. Take on Brandon out. Bye-bye.